Hey guys, my name is Ethan and I'm showing you how to respring a couch. Alright guys, the method we're going over today is our no sag spring method. Generally for our seat sections, we tend to use 8 gauge springs. It's used for seats mainly because it's able to bend more without snapping. So let's go over the tools we need for this project. Because we use such heavy duty springs, you'll need something heavy duty to cut them. It's just regular old bolt cutters. You could also use an angle grinder. Next, you'll need something to attach the clips. We use a tack hammer here at the shop. You can use just a regular claw hammer, but we'll show you why we use a smaller version later. The clips we use to attach it are these tiny little things and th these nails. Screws tend to split the wood of your supports and then the springs will just rip the clip right out. Next, you'll need something to pull your springs. This is the tool we prefer to use. It's just an average spring puller that you can get on Amazon for 40 to $50. But you can also make your own at home, like this one we made in shop. Even though this one's rough, it works just as well. All right, let's go over step number one, which is measuring. And I'll show you how that works with this. You wanna have your first springs two to three inches from the outside of your frame. So I'll just say that's two. For the rest of them, you want them to be evenly spaced between six and eight inches apart and not over your center support, which is represented by this purple line. So we can probably fit two or three more springs here. We'll go to eight inches here. Mirror it on the other side so that it's even. For this bottom one, a little more complicated. You have two supports, but the same concepts apply. We have two to three inches from your edges. And then between six and eight inches for the rest of them, as long as you don't hang over the supports. So it should look something like that. Once I've found the best spacing for the springs, I'll go through and mark the spots along the frame with a ruler or a square tool. I'll then nail in the clips right over the middle of my marks. The clips should be just barely hanging over the edge of the frame, maybe about an eighth of an inch. I'll then repeat the process for the back of the piece, making sure that my measurements mirror exactly the ones from the front. Once all of my clips are in the right place, I'll measure the distance between the front and back clips. I'll take this distance and divide it by 1.65 and round up to the nearest half. This will tell us the best number of zigzags to cut on our springs. In this case, the number was 21. So I'll count 21 loops starting with the first loop on the right side until I get to 21. Then I'll cut on the 21st loop. Before I cut any more springs, I need to make sure we got the right length. To do that, I'm going to stretch it onto the frame and place a yardstick underneath without securing the spring. The top of the spring should be about one inch above the frame at the middle, or at about the top of this ruler. We have a bit too much here, so we need to trim the spring. We will trim off half a spring at a time and test it out. Uh, we did this twice on this couch, but be careful not to trim too much as it will adjust more than you think it will. So right now it's still above the ruler, but just a little, and cutting it more would bring us below, so we'll leave it like it is. Now that we have the right length, we'll cut the rest of the springs to match it. Once we have cut the springs, we need to bend the ends to help them stay in the clips. We have this tool that we use at the shop, but you can use a vise and a hammer at home. Now that we have our springs cut and the ends bent in, we can attach them all to the back side of the piece. After that, we will stretch the springs into place using a spring stretcher. You'll 
you'll want to use some heavy twine to tie the springs together to help engage more of the springs at once. You'll want between two to two and a half lengths of the couch to tie the springs. Hammer a nail about halfway into the frame on the side, about one hand length, thumb to pinky from the front. Tie a loop of twine to it and hammer it down, and then staple the excess in a Z shape to really lock it in place. So the first knot will just be a really basic knot over, under, and through to secure it to the spring. Make sure to pull all your excess through just to not have it in the way. This might take a minute. Then you'll pull the string back and forth, making sure to put some tension into the string and making it taut, but not pulling the springs too far in either direction. Take the string in your right hand, wrap it over your first and third finger in your left, under the spring and grab it with your middle finger to pull it through. And then you'll just repeat. On our next string, we'll tie it on the same side about a hand's length away from where we ended. On our second string, I tied the same knots but with wider loops to engage more springs. If you run out of twine before you finish, just tie a square knot in the center with a second piece and keep going. Now we'll cut a piece of liner to go over the springs. We use a material called FLW, but you can use any kind of upholstery scrap fabric that is big enough to cover the entire area. Start by stretching and stapling along the back and a single side before moving on to the other side, stretching it as tight as you can and stapling it down. Then you'll move on to the front. Again, pull as tight as you can, staple it down before you trim and put the excess down as well. Finally, you'll trim the excess and staple down the remaining edge. All right guys, that's how you spring a couch. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments section and if you have any projects you want us to teach you how to do. If you like the video, please consider subscribing and we'll see you next time.